G'day folks, this afternoon I'm going bait fishing at Lake William Hovel. That's not Lake William Hovel, that's Lake Buffalo. Bugger it, I've come to the wrong lake. Hey you! You're watching Robbie fishing. Now, I haven't really come to the wrong lake. Quite often in my videos, many of you will have noticed that I forget stuff. I forget to take a landing net, I forget to take my fishing rod holder, I forget to take a tape measure. Well yesterday I come fishing up here at Lake Buffalo and I didn't forget to take anything fishing with me. But I did forget to bring something home. <laughs> my fishing rod holder. I've just packed my car ready to go to Lake William Hovel this afternoon, all excited but couldn't find my fishing rod holder. I figure it must still be at Lake Buffalo. So, I've come to Lake Buffalo looking for it. Oh, I think I can see it. There it is. Yes, it is here. Whew. <laughs> right where I left it. I was fishing down there and I carried all my stuff up to this steep bank and threw it here. Then I walked around there. I came over here and picked my stuff up and walked up to the car. Anyway, now I can drive over all them hills over there and go fishing at Lake William Hovel. Ah, Lake William Hovel. That's more like it. Right, I put my U-Butte fishing rod holder in because I brought it with me. Sort of. Little stumpy rod with a paternoster. Can go out that side. Long rod with a running sinker. Can go way out there. Now both lines are in, so it's time to just sit back and play the waiting game. And it could be a very relaxing afternoon. I think I could be waiting for quite a while. Lake William Hovel usually fishes pretty slow this time of year. I could have stayed at Lake Buffalo where I know the fishing is good. And at Lake Buffalo I could have sat in the sun all afternoon whereas here I'm going to be in the shade all afternoon. And I'm 200 metres altitude higher. So it's going to be a much colder afternoon. Colder air and slower fishing. But I couldn't care less. I just love being here and I like trying different places. Hopefully the fishing gods will shine down on me and deliver the goods. It's four o'clock. I've been here one hour. I set up at three o'clock. I've been here one hour and I haven't had a touch. Not a bite, not a nibble, nothing. The fishing is as dead as a squashed mosquito up here at the moment. Remember a couple of years ago I reviewed this little electric cigarette lighter? It's a ripper. It lives in my tackle box. Anyway, while I'm waiting for a bite, I'm just sitting here playing with fire. <laughs> I've got a bit of tissue paper out of the car. I set it on fire with my electric lighter, like that, and I threw it in a cardboard box that was on the floor of the car. Keeping myself entertained while I wait for the monster fish. Just had my first bite and it's on the small rod. Still playing with it. Almost at the two hour mark. At the one hour and fifty minute mark I just had my first nibble. And it stopped. You know, it's still there. It's taken up the slack and missed him. Bugger. I put it straight back out. There's not a second to lose. So I took 110 minutes <laughs> to get me first nibble. It's going to happen. This is the twilight bite. They're about to come to life. And in fact, what I might do, I'll rip up that bit of slack there. This tastes plain with it now, he's already back. He's already back. I was just about to say, what I might do is reel this in and just cast it back here. But this fish is already back and got him! Ha! It's actually a reasonable sized fish. I think it's a trout actually. If it's a red fin, it's not a bad sized one, but I think it's a, a small trout. And it is a small trout. You know what? I'm going to keep that. I've got my, uh, my Bouge RV fridge in the car. It's not a big fish, but I'm going to keep it. And I'm going to fry it in a bit of butter. And that's just going to taste lovely. Awesome! Another fresh feed of fish. Caught on the Janjuk worms. I was just getting ready to do the whole 
you know, it's it's four or five o'clock and it's been two hours and blah blah blah. But it's it's ten to five, not quite two hours. Have a look at that pair of wiggle worms. They are wiggling, wriggling and jiggling. And hopefully they'll catch me another trout. It's just gone 5 p.m. Two hours in and I've caught one. Can I improve on my total before it gets too dark? What on the same rod? Oh yes, it's all happening on the short rod. It's all happening on the stumpy rod. There he goes, still playing with it. The running sinker rig hasn't had a touch all afternoon and a little stumpy here's had a couple of nibbles now. Yep, I sat back down. I was there for about two seconds, I reckon, and then it nibbled again. There it goes. There it goes. And got him. Very small. I reckon this is a little redfin, this one. If it's a trout, it's a very, very small trout. It's a, <laughs> it's a very, very small something. A little redfin, I'm pretty sure. Yep. Incy wincy redfin. Oh well. Variety is the spice of life. One little trotie, one little ready. See you later mate. No wait, I'll put it in slow motion. See you later mate, at 240 frames a second. I might leave the same worms on here, but I'm just going to give them a bit of a reshuffle on the hook. There we go. That's as good as a new one. Put it straight back out where I've been getting all of the action. Here's the little stumpy rods coming out in front tonight. Well, I've got the daily double, but can I get the trifecta? A little red fin and a nice trout. Now the trout wasn't big, but it's nice enough. What I'll do, I'll cook it in a frying pan with a bit of butter. I'll cook it on around you know, low to medium heat until it cooks all the way through. Then when it's done, I'll crank the heat up full bore and get it really hot and just burn both sides of the fish because the skin will absorb the butter and it'll become really crunchy and nice. And then I'll just break it open. The, the bones will pull out of the meat. The meat will just scrape off the skin. I'll put a bit of salt on it and it'll just be, it'll be wonderful. Now because all of the action has been on the rod on the left, I've actually moved both lines. The rod on the left that was out there is now over there closer to those reeds, the short rod. And the long rod, which was out there, is now out there where the short rod was. So instead of having one there and one there, I've now got both over that side. There's a nibble on the, the stumpy rod again. There it goes. Someone's playing with it. Here's the little stumpy, he's getting all the action today. It's a bite on the stumpy rod. Oh, it's a bite. Just had a bite on the stumpy rod and again. Missed him. I'll leave it where it is. I wouldn't have moved it too far then. I probably only moved the worms a couple of feet when I struck then. So I'll leave it where it is. And I reckon that whatever that was will find that again. It did straight away. And still missed it. It's had a nice bite on the running sinker rig and got him. Something very small. first bite that I've had on the running sinker rig and the first fish that I've caught on the running sinker rig that's a little brown trout it's a rainbow trout actually lovely little rainbow trout see you later mate well folks it's just gone six o'clock that's three hours three fish for three hours. I've had much worse fishing trips up here at Lake William Hovel. This has been okay. I had a few other bites. Most of the action was right on sunset. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video.